What's going on guys, Rev from Rev2360 here, and time to do what all YouTubers do at least once in their lifetime and complain about an online community. And before this video starts, I'd like to preface that the vocal minority of the Smash Brothers community does not represent the entire fan base. That should be a given, however, I feel that the community has gotten so out of hand as of late that something needs to be said. Some YouTubers have lightly touched on the subject, but haven't really made an entire video on it, so I feel I might as well before Ultimate comes out. One big thing that shakes up the entire fanbase is the inclusion of fighters in Smash. Now I understand, Smash fighters are perhaps the defining factor of the entire series and for good reason. Smash is defined as the definitive gaming crossover, however people take it to the nth degree on just how important it is. While it is a great honor to have your character be playable in Smash, people treat the role of assist trophies and such to be very much an insult. This is seen specifically with the Waluigi and Shovel Knight assist trophies. They see it as them being deconfirmed, as if it's meant to be a scathing insult towards the people who wanted them playable. And those who wanted them in take it as a brutal defeat, and I truly think that's quite the overdramatization of the game. I mean, we had a really good pull this time around, all things considered. On the complete other side of the spectrum, however, people get very, very vitriolic towards new characters that they do not feel is deserving of a spot on the roster. First of all, no character doesn't deserve to be in Smash. That is perhaps the most subjective matter when it comes to a character choice. Unless you're talking about Krom, of course because uh, he's literally the worst character in his own game. God, I remember when everyone hated Bayonetta when she came out as the top pick on the Smash 4 ballot, and to this day, her name is associated within the community negatively. Pardon the game theory, but I think the reason why this is is because they considered her to be the reason why their character got snuffed out. Of course, that's not the only reason why people hate her, but I do think that is a big underlying reason. On top of this, there are indeed legitimately people who are very mad that Piranha Plant made it into the roster. A portion of the fanbase think that one character's inclusion means that a spot of the roster has been taken up, and therefore has been taken potentially for the character they wanted in the game. And personally, I feel that drastically oversimplifies the reality of how the game is worked on. First of all, the director Masahiro Sakurai does not decide on which characters make it into the game. He clarified on Twitter that it is actually Nintendo who makes the ultimate decision on who makes it into the game, and he has the final say if they can make a fighter based on that character. And secondly, proposing that a character had their spot taken away suggests that the roster is solely dependent on numerical count, rather than simply how many characters the big N thinks is enough. You also have to consider the varying amounts of development different characters take time for. A character like Pichu's is a tiny character whose moves are basically the same as Pikachu's, so that would make them much more easier to develop than, uh, say, the Ice Climbers who are, who are two whole unique characters. So no, your character did not have their spot taken away from them. It is simply that the dev team possibly didn't think they could come up with an interesting way to put your character into the game. And the last thing I'll touch on on this segment, please stop adding Sakurai on Twitter. The man is working tirelessly to direct a game that you all want, and you react with your character suggestions that he isn't in a position to include. Just let the man rest. He's suffered enough, you guys. Speaking of things that separate Smash, Melee isn't the best Smash game. But let's think about this deeply for a second. Especially when you realize that the only reason that people actually care about the game anymore still is quote unquote because of the physics. And listen, I get it, when a video game feels good, it's really good, and you keep coming back to that game. But in my personal opinion, I feel that Skullgirls from a technical standpoint is much better than Smash. That is perhaps a bold claim, but that game has crunch. And Eliza, but also crunch. But sometimes you just gotta realize that if a game only has physics, that can only take the game so far. And that's why I ponder why people consider it the best. Wouldn't the best of the series be the game with the most content and the game with the most replayability? Like, I get it, you sunk hundreds of hours into the game with your dorky friends, but you gotta take those rose tinted glasses off sometime. I do realize that there is much more to Melee than simply the physics, but that's the main thing that people allegedly keep going back to the game for. After all, other Smash games have things like target practice and classic mode, 
Admittedly, it varies, but again, no one even hammers in the importance of these modes, and I simply can't understand why. It's always physics, 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 wave dashing, physics, not to mention the roster of the game is puny. Not only that, but half the roster already has the same moveset as another character. Doesn't sound all too appealing, does it? I admit, there wasn't really anything in this segment that I meant to be really hard hitting as the last one. I just wanted to vent about people glorifying Melee, even though it's kind of just an okay entry. I've said it before and I'll say it again, Smash works best as a party game. The real fun comes from playing the game with friends. This is perhaps why Melee is glorified so much, the nostalgia. And I'd much prefer a game that plays up this aspect of Smash rather than one that is more technically impressive than Melee. Best case scenario is that Ultimate tries to do both the best it can. Alright, time to get into the real meat and potatoes of this video. Basically, people are playing Smash early, pirating it, and spoiling it for everyone else. Now, believe it or not, this story actually is more complex than it really seems upon first glance. To get it out of the way, I think pirating games in this day and age is simply not a good practice. Most definitely when it comes to a game that isn't even out yet. That elevates the act of piracy even further. In the past, perhaps it was a more viable way of trying games? Maybe. But we live in the modern age where playing demos is as easy as pie, and digital return policies have gotten so good. So no, I do not condone what these pirates have done, and honestly, I do think that they should face some sort of consequences. However, that is not to say that Nintendo in this instance is completely innocent. First of all, they allowed the game to be sold early in Mexico. Why though? This is literally perhaps the biggest Switch release of its life, and you are not going to safe proof it in any way? I really doubt it's that difficult to do, so I'm baffled as to why the big end allowed this to happen. And secondly, Nintendo really needs to start realizing that their hacking issue is a big issue. At this point, it's a goddamn catastrophe. Nintendo has had problems with hacking on Switch since its release, but honestly how they allowed the game to be like this in a completely unprotected manner is honestly kind of disappointing. I haven't seen such hysteria over something like this maybe since Pokemon Sun and Moon was leaked, but even then, this is getting wide coverage. Perhaps this is poetic of the state of the Smash community as a whole. It's a perversion of wanting to know more about this game. You want to know so much more about it, and every time you do, it's like a drug hit. Fans stop at absolutely nothing to find out more. To fabricate a leak to garner 5 seconds of fame. To do everything it takes to know everything about the game and to finally have it in your hands. And when you do finally get to play it, suddenly that euphoria is gone and what you are left with is an experience that does not meet your larger than life expectations.